Of Starfleet's many designs, a few stand out as being landmark classes that endured not only decades but centuries of service. The two most commonly cited are the Excelsior class and the Miranda, both of which are two of the longest lived designs being created in the 23rd century and seeing service well into the late 24th. The original design was created for the film Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. The hijacked USS Reliant was to be the centerpiece for a battle scene and originally the vessel was supposed to be another Constitution class. However, it was decided to break up that classic silhouette to visually differentiate the vessels in their murky fight scenes. The vessel was designed by Joe Jennings, Mike Miner and Lee Cole and was technically one of the earliest alternate designs introduced into Starfleet so there had to be a strong design callback to the Enterprise. This is true for the hull coloration, the nacelles and saucer shape, and originally the vessel was flipped with the nacelles above the hull. When the model was constructed at ILM, it was made at a smaller scale than the Enterprise model and would go on to be reused in several other Miranda class appearances. The Miranda class was created to be an antagonist for the Enterprise, but additionally, it was always considered a survey vessel, to be a workhorse and not as heavily armed as the Constitution class. This is true of its canon depiction too, however, there were some steps added to the law. Now, as a preface, there has been a popularised design for a TOS era Miranda class and while it is not canon, it is often retroactively folded into the design origin in universe for fleet variety and the added history it brings. I'll include it here, but technically it might not actually be canonical. The Miranda class began its life in Starfleet designer bureaus in the early 2260s in response to the escalating tensions with the Klingon Empire once more. Having just passed through a serious year-long skirmish with the Klingon Empire, Starfleet had to rebuild its forces, and when it did so, its line included designs that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the latest Klingon innovations from the newly unified Klingon Defence Force, ships like the D-7 Battlecruiser. The first ships came out in 2264 with this mission profile in mind, powerful light cruisers that lacked the multi-role effectiveness of the Constitution. Internally, they were far more condensed vessels too than the relatively spacious alternatives of the era. However, with the Treaty of Organia coming into effect in 2267, the need for such combat-ready vessels declined and the Miranda line was revamped by 2274. This was to capitalise off the back of the Constitution refit programme and the two shared many similarities in technology. This refit is the origin of the Miranda as we know her, and she had some declawing done. Firstly, the extensive tactical systems were scaled back and replaced with additional sensor systems, and the role went from a patrol and combat ship to a survey vessel. It was in this overhaul that the distinctive roll bar was added. Not every Miranda featured such a device, but it was through this addition that the line would become more adaptable, with several variations coming into existence during its lifetime, and even a separate class entirely. Starfleet would bookmark this sort of development for use when they began to design other ships, such as the Nebula class later on. With the removal of the torpedo launcher from the saucer section, the ship still needed a launcher of some form, so that was added to the roll bar with both forward and rear facing tubes. As was standard for Starfleet vessels, this was suitable for probes and for torpedoes. Phaser cannons were added to the roll bar too on some designs for added armament. After all, the Miranda may now be classified as a survey ship, but it began as a battleship of sorts. Additionally, the rear facing hangars remained originally for troop deployment via landing craft, they now acted as the perfect launch point for a small survey fleet of auxiliary craft. The Miranda's new mission profile was now a survey vessel with a far higher sensor acuity than it originally had, as well as the ability to specialise in planetary scans. 
However, it was built as a skirmisher and as such at its core, it could still handle patrol and other hazardous missions. This role was later mirrored in the Centaur class, and reversed with the 24th century Titan, which began as a science vessel but proved a capable patrol boat. The Miranda was developed at the Advanced Ship Design Bureau facility at Starbase 134 over Rigel 6. When the line entered production, however, they were primarily constructed at the Copernicus shipyards at Luna and the High Imperial Fleet Complex of Andoria. The initial USS Miranda NX-1800 and the Prospero NCC-1801 were the first two vessels commissioned of the original Miranda configuration, with the Reliant NCC-1864 being one of the earliest to be commissioned under the new schematics. The ship was 237 metres long, 142 wide, and a reserved 58 metres tall, covering 11 decks. It had a mass of 150,000 tonnes, and a crew of anywhere between 200 to 360, with the lower end being more common. Their emergency evacuation capacity, however, was only up to 500 personnel due to the utilisation of space. Now, because of the extreme length of time this class of vessel was in service, its statistics are all over the place, with vessels becoming even more varied as time went on, persisting over the change of warp scales in the early 24th century. By the end of its lifespan, the Miranda had a maximum warp factor of 9.2 with shutdown after 12 hours, and a cruising speed of around warp 6 in the new scale. But its older scale saw it cruise at warp 7, which is slower than its final form. Yeah, the core itself was a vertical one, post-2270, and by the end of its life, it was a 1500 Cochrane core, putting it on par with the Centaur class, but nowhere near as efficient. The same can be said of its armaments, which have also varied in time. Now, this video focuses primarily on the canon appearances of the Miranda class, so I won't be discussing the TOS version here, but the Miranda itself has had no inbuilt torpedo launchers as previously discussed, nor phaser cannons. Instead, it operated six Type 7 phaser banks around the saucer section. However, with the addition of the roll bar, this was adjusted to have four torpedo launchers, two fore and two aft, and two additional phaser cannons, which packed a higher yield blast. Additionally, some Miranda class vessels saw the addition of a secondary deflector array atop the roll bar to supplement the main one, which was concealed beneath the hull. Its twin shuttle bays were expanded to fit four shuttlecraft with an additional two pods and twelve worker bees. The variation of the Miranda design over time led there to be several different terms for a multitude of specialty functions. The USS Saratoga in 2367, for example, was a version that had no roll bar but did feature the addition of long-range sensor pods to the sides, amplifying its effectiveness as a survey vessel. It did, however, have photon torpedo launchers incorporated back into its frame somewhere. The Soyuz variation was an effective alteration of the Miranda class that looked very similar to the original design, however its changes were far more than cosmetic, with a number of internal alterations being made, earning it a moniker as a separate classification of ship. Essentially, it was a callback to the original purpose of the Miranda class as a patrol vessel with a heavier payload of weaponry and several more sensor pods added to the sides. The aft was also extended to add extra decks and facilities, culminating in a new design. This is also something that Starfleet would continue to do, with vessels like the Sagan and Echelon class bearing strong similarities and functioning in different roles within the fleet by the 25th century. Overall, the Miranda is pretty much defined by its longevity, with most of its variations owing to this factor. Internally, there was a great variety in things like bridge layout, and with the only commonality being that they were more compact vessels. This can simply be attributed to the Miranda being designed as a combat ship, and therefore effort was put into making it as sturdy as possible. Modularity created by its roll bar attachment, and additional alterations, mean that the vessel continued to act and to fulfil roles within the fleet around both survey and patrol functions for over a hundred years. 
even with the emergence of the centaur class, the Miranda continued to thrive, and when you encountered such a vessel, it could be a relic of the late 2270s, or even a brand new vessel. However, by the time of the Dominion War, the class was really showing its age and reaching the limits of what was possible, so it was eventually phased out. Few other classes can claim to have such a distinguished collective career than the Miranda class, and for decades, while not the most prestigious ship of the Federation, this smaller cruiser was the backbone of many operations. Thanks for watching this breakdown on the Miranda class cruiser. There was a ton of lore to narrow down due to this vessel's age in and out of universe, but I hope I did a good job. I've been Rick, thanks again, and goodbye.